Uh, so I'm Mark Sutton. I'm a developer here at Not on the High Street, and I'm going to talk to you today a little, give you a basic introduction to uh, Sed and Orc, to Unix utilities. Uh, and I've called my type, my um, presentation She Said uh, and Orc Said. And because I was originally going to do it yesterday, it was in recognition of International Women's Day. So, so are old school Unix utilities dead? Do we still need them? What is a utility? Well, under the Unix philosophy, it was one tool does one job and it does it very well. And use the right tool for the job, as I like to call it, RTFJ. So under Unix, we could do a lot of scripting and we can pass output from one tool to another. So basically from either um, standard in and pipe it through to uh, a tool and then pipe it out to standard out. Um, and we'll be doing a bit of this, uh, that, in this presentation. So, and I'm going to attempt to do some, well, I won't do live coding, I've recorded it. So, here we have, um, and this is an example that I've used and I've kind of modified from something I did here recently where we were looking at compressing our, uh, recompressing our images, which were too large. So, um, we have a number of, well, we have about 15 million images stored in the cloud. Is that right? Uh, in S3 in one of our buckets, and um, we needed to be able to process them. Now, obviously, 15 million images is quite a lot. When we first started on the work back in, um, uh, just before Black Friday last year, uh, we basically had 11 million images. Um, so potentially, we need to do something around some archiving and identifying which ones are not used. But uh, anyway, so from what I want you to take from this slide is basically this is, um, I've sanitized the data, so I've stripped out um, some information that uh, I guess is maybe confidential. Anyway, um, so we've got the, the first, so basically um, DevOps gave me a uh, file which was uh, consisted of basically a date and time for our S3 bucket, uh, the size of the image, which is the second one here, so the 1074, and then the third part was the, uh, the actual image. Um, and that's what I've basically sanitized. So I've put some new UIDs in as opposed to what S3 does. So if you look at it and say, oh, well, S3 doesn't present it like that, that's correct. Um, and what we want to do is we basically want to process this file of 15 million, million images and work out how to um, identify ones that we need to recompress. Uh, and so you can see here also in the slide that we have a number of styles. So the medium, micro, original, and preview. They're all different styles that we use when we pass a image to the file service through the uh, monolith. Um, and sorry, I didn't appreciate that some of the slides are gonna be a little bit uh, off the screen. So what's the objective? To cleanse a data file that has sensitive, well, this is what I was gonna do at the end. I didn't quite get there, so I apologize for that. Um, but to cleanse a data file that has sensitive information in it so we can, it can be used in a talk which will be open source um, and demonstrate what we did. So what utilities we're going to use? We're going to use uh, cut, which um, cuts out sections of a line or from files. Uh, SED, which is a stream editor. That's the main thing I'm going to talk about. ORC, which is a, a text pattern scanning and programming language. It's a lot more powerful than SED, so you kind of generally... you tended to start off doing things with cut and then move to said, and then you got to a point where you needed to generate reports and you typically reach for something like orc um, back, in the, uh, back in the day, I won't say when. Um, some of us have used it, I know from um, chatting to people on Slack, um, some of you probably don't even know that these things existed. Um, born long after they were probably uh, no longer used or uh, taught in computer science kind of programs. Uh, and then this head, which you can use to display the first lines of a file and tail. So these are pretty much all the utilities I'm going to use. Um, I missed off sort, um, but we'll go into that. So said, what is it? It's a streamlined, non-interactive editor. Uh, you type commands at the command line. It's non-destructive, so you can work on a file, and it's not going to change that file. Um, you can process, uh, it processes the input, the file, or from standard input, line by line. Uh, it uses a temporary buffer called a pattern space. It outputs to standard out for a file. 
And by default, it prints out every single line that is processed, which you'll see in, when I get to the examples. Uh, we can write said scripts. They're relatively primitive. Um, I've got a small example of one here. I uh, would have liked to have done more. Um, didn't, so apologies. Uh, so if you come for advanced stuff, um, you might want to go now. Um, this is pretty sort of entry level. Uh, and it works with patterns. And these can be addresses and files. Um, so line numbers, or it can be some form of text. And typically, we use regular, regular expressions. So um, we use a lot of regexes in Ruby. Um, so they're generally the same. There might be some subtle differences. Um, and they're pretty powerful, and they allow us to do a lot of things. Right, so some said commands that we're going to talk about. First of all, we're going to talk about print, delete, and substitute. So typically, uh, the first example there is we have said, which is the uh, utility name. We pass it some command, and we pass it some file name or file names, and it will process them. So the first example is we're going to say, in our data images text file, we want to print out lines one to five. Now, if we do that, we're actually going to run into a problem because it'll it'll print out lines one to five, and because it's also processing line by line for lines one to five, you'll end up with duplicates. So what we typically use is minus n, which says suppress um, the duplicate, or well, not the duplicates, but only print out what you've been asked to process as opposed to showing me everything in the file. So if you have a file which has got 20 lines in it and you say minus n 1 to 5, it will only display what's happened on lines 1 to 5. Um, so if we say uh, 5 to 10 D, D is delete, and um, that'll print it out to standard output unless we send it to another file, which is typically what you would do um, if you're trying to process something or um, you would use a pipe and send it to another command um, which is kind of the, I'm going to say the Unix way. Um, so the addressing there is uh, 5 and 10 where we're using numbers. What about if we want to search for particular words? Um, so we can use S for substitute. Uh, and so we're going to look for a word to find or some words to find, and we're going to replace them with the replacement word. Um, now, some of the other commands are um, that you can put after the uh, replacement word, so basically here, a G, which would be a global substitution. Um, you can uh, put W and uh, give it a file name, uh, and you can also do translations on uh, characters, but you can't use regular expressions for those. Uh, so I've done some recordings. Nick showed me a cool tool called ASCII Cinema, which is really good. Uh, so I'm going to play you a couple of movies, super exciting, the latest from... Well, they're going to be blockbusters this summer. Not. Okay. Uh, here's one I recorded earlier. Actually, hold on. Ooh, can we stop it? <laughs> right. It's a bit better. So we look at our data file. We look at our data directory, and we've got a number of files in there. The one we're going to use is the images text file. So let's just run cat, which is a way of looking at a file. And I've stripped it down because there's 100 lines in the images text file. Um, but funnily enough, a file called images first five lines has exactly five lines in it. So we've, we've used cat to read the file. And then we've piped it to something called WC, which allows us with the minus L to give us the number of records that are in the file. And as I said, it's called first five lines, and it's got five lines. We could use head and pass it the um, flag for um, number of records we wanted to look at, so minus n with three. And we could look at that file and say, well, what are the first three lines in it? And we can see that we have our um, date and time, we have our size, and then we have the uh, image that we're looking at, which is what we're trying to uh, get to, um, to pass to our script that would run this reprocessing. Uh, so as an example, um, you can see where we do said here without the minus n with 1 to 3p. We end up getting uh, duplication. So we've got medium title T t-shirt, and then it's duplicated. We've got micro title T shirt, and it's duplicated. 
So what it's done is for every record that it's uh, processed, um, for lines one to three, we've got duplication. And the reason that you only see one normal and one original is because we only process lines one to three. So it processed each line where it found it, it printed it out. And for the um, other lines, because we haven't used minus N to suppress the output, it's also showed what was in the rest of the file. Um, where we use the minus N, you get what you would expect, where you say, you know, if you're looking for lines one to three, you'd expect to only see lines one to three. Okay, so that's fairly simple. Um, let's just clear this, sorry. So what are we going to do here? We are, I can't remember what I recorded. Okay, so we're going to process lines two to three, and we're going to delete them from our first five lines, first, first five images. Okay, and as we can see, it prints it to standard output. Now here we want to search for the word medium underscore, and we want to supersize it. And lo and behold, you see at the top of the first entry in that file, it's changed from medium to supersize. And if we look at the original file, by running head against it, we can see that this is non-destructive because our first line is still medium underscore. Okay, So that's why it's called a, uh, a stream editor. Uh, now, if, as I said, if we wanted to save that, then we'd just pipe it to some file. Whoops. Sorry. What am I doing here? This, oh, I've moved the file. Sorry. Right. That's rather embarrassing. Didn't, <laughs> didn't test that. Uh, basically, I had a file, which uh, I'll see if I can pull up later on, um, whereby um, we were going to interactively uh, use said to edit it. So typically, if you use uh, Vi or Emacs, you'll often go and run a command at the bottom of the um, editing pane um, but just by going uh, colon, and then you can do the, you can effectively run said commands within your Vi or Emacs session. So you would say, if you went... Um, one comma dollar, that's the entire file. And then you'd go space, and then you go S for the substitute. Um, to say on a substitute a word, you go and search for the word, uh, and then um, put in your replacement word, and you can see G for global, and it will go and make a global replacement across the entire file as opposed to line by line. So sometimes that's a really quick and easy way to edit things. Sometimes the data you're dealing with um, is so large that it's not going to open up and buy. So you need to run it through uh, a said script, which is basically why these things, I guess, were originally written. Um, okay, so that's the end of the blockbusters. Uh, some more said commands. Um, in place of uh, the S on the left-hand side, sorry, I should have uh, had a diagram for this, um, you can use A, which will append one or more lines um, to the current line. You can use C, which will um, replace text in the current line with, with some new text. Uh, it's effectively the same as uh, S. You've got um, I, which will insert text above the current line. Um, L is really useful for when you're dealing with trying to find non-printing characters. So you'll have something that just doesn't display correctly on the screen, or you can't even see that it's a, a non-printable character. Um, you might think it's a space, so L is really helpful. Um, you can use Q. So you might just want to do the first 100 lines, because you've got you know, something you need to process at, say, thousands of lines long, and you just want to make sure that the said command you've written is going to be correct instead of sending off to the to be processed. And um, I guess that was important in the in the days where things were very constrained on memory and, um, you know, uh, processing was a lot less powerful than it is today. So, uh, and then you can use the uh, exclamation, exclamation mark, which will apply the command to all lines except the selected ones. So it's effectively a not. Okay, and then you've got some flags. So we saw one, which was minus N, which suppresses the default output. So you pass these. These are like typical Unix flags. You pass them before you, uh, after the, you've invoked the utility with the name of it. Uh, you pass the flags and then whatever the commands are that you want. Now, if you use minus E, it allows you to do multiple edits. So you could stack a whole load of things up, which is quite useful, um, which is effectively... Um, the Vim session you saw there, I had a bunch of um, those from 
trying to build a script up. I realized I've made a mistake, and so I was just going to show you the interactive editing there, um, which, because I moved the file, uh, was a bit of a, uh, didn't work. <laughs> Um, if you say minus F, then you can pass said a um, script file name, which you can have all of your commands already pre-written in. Um, so you can basically build them up, um, have line by line, and it'll go off, and you can run that against then uh, a data file or a bunch of data files, um, or whatever whatever the input is, because it might have come through a pipe um, to the said process. And then you've got minus uh, capital E, which is uh, extended regular expressions. It's available on some OSs. I mean, most of them now, but um, 20 years ago or so, it wasn't. Um, OK, so let's look at said scripting very briefly. A said script could look like uh, here, where we've got multiple um, lines. I've just put the um, continuation line there just to make it a bit easier to read, but it's, it's not actually required. Um, so we've got, first of all, we're going to look for some words to replace, and we're going to replace them with new words, and we're going to do that globally. And then we're also going to look for other words to replace and replace it with, uh, that was, should have been something else other than new words because it ended up being um, destructive. Uh, and then yet more to replace, and then hopefully this was the last replacements. Um, so if we ran that, um, we would need to say Z minus F, and uh, this file happens to be called scriptfile.sed, and then whatever our data file is. Um, and that's what I had recorded in, in Vim, but it's gone wrong. OK, so let's get our file that we had into some sort of shape. So basically what we want to get to is we want to strip out all the white space. Uh, so the command we're going to use is we're going to use uh, extended regular expressions for sed. And we're going to say, go and search um, for multiple spaces, which is the between the two um, backslashes. And then we've said, uh, I can never remember what the regular expression is, uh, basically any space, any number of spaces. Uh, and then the caret is used uh, because that's what we're going to replace it with. So we want to strip out all the white space. We want to make this file easy to process with our um, awk utility. Uh, and then we're going to do this globally on our data images text file. And we're going to create a new file, which is in um, the work in progress files area. And we're going to call it images.awk.01. So if we head that file, we can see that we've done the processing. We've now got our uh, date timestamp uh, delineated by the caret. We've got our file size, which is the third uh, column. And then we've got our image name. Um, and I didn't appreciate that. That didn't fit on the page. Um, I've edited it elsewhere, so you'll see it a bit clearer, but it's um, not the best. OK, so Orc. This is the other utility I want to talk about. Um, its name comes from the three authors who wrote it. Uh, and it's been in Unix since like Unix 7, so sometime in the 70s. So for most of us before our time. Um, it's a programming language to, for manipulating data and report generation. Um, its inputs are one or more files, or from standard input, um, and it's uh, or as an output from another process um, pipe to it. It can be used on the command line or as a program, and this is what's really powerful about Orc. You can actually, it's actually a programming language in itself. Um, it's uh, well, Maz sent me a link to a um, O'Reilly book, which is like uh, 600 pages or something. So. Um, it's huge. There's, there's an awful lot you can do with it. And it's probably underutilized today because we reach for other tools that might not necessarily be the right tool for the job, but it's because we know the other tools. Um, again, like said, it scans the file line by line and it uses, um, it matches with uh, against specified patterns. So uh, in the work that we did here, we used um, a flag of minus F, which is a field separator. And we use this when the, so the default is uh, a space. And we use this when we want to override the, um, the default. Uh, and then, so basically, you use the awk command and, and you will um, print out uh, what you want to see. So here we've said we're going to use print dollar zero to see each line. So you can use this very quickly to get an idea of what your file looks like. So you could head your file, pass it to awk, say print dollar zero. Uh, with the curly braces, 
and you'll get however many lines you pass through here and it'll give you a quick idea of what you're dealing with. Um, sometimes you're working on these kind of files and it's you know it's just hard to keep in your brain because there's, there's so much going on. There can be multiple patterns to search for um, and multiple delimiters too. Uh, so in this task, what we basically wanted to get was we wanted to print out the image part of the um, file, which is the fourth, we can see here, it's the fourth field. So are we done yet? No. So our application here takes the image we send it, passes it to the file service, and does some, which does the magic and creates the styles that we see in the data, which is our micro, macro, preview, thumb, normal, original, and uh, we've got, I think, two others. Um, or we're going to have two others. Um, so we basically want to target the files of a, um, in the work we were doing, we wanted to target files that were of a specific style. So we chose the previews, and we wanted to target anything that was over um, 80 KB in size. We kind of talked around that and what the right size was. Um, in the example here, I've had to change it to 30 KB because the selection I took, uh, when I ran it for 80 KB, there were no results. So um, better to find that out before I um, demonstrated that. So here's an example of an AWP command. And in this case, we're going to um, look at the uh, search for preview underscore. And then we're going to um, print out. And while we're printing out, we're actually going to use sort. And we're going to um, sort our file in order of largest to smallest, because we wanted to target the largest files first to make the site more responsive and faster. Um, so we've got our alt command, uh, and what I've missed off that, I've realized, is the minus F to specify what the field separator is. Um, but we're reading from our images one file, and we're going to um, create a new file, um, which is the preview images orc02. So the sorting is done via the Unix pipe. Um, so we pass the output of the search for preview uh, and print to the sort command. Uh, and basically, that looks like um, minus n, we're doing a numeric sort. Minus t, as we're saying, this is the field separator. Um, minus k3 is the third key field. Uh, and I can't remember the reason it changed to 3 from 4. But um, when we ran this, that's, that's actually what happened. Uh, and then minus r to um, basically go largest to smallest. And we end up with this. Uh, set of results. Sorry, it doesn't fit on the screen. I didn't appreciate it when I um, set this up. How do I get rid of the... Oh, okay. Um, so you can see we've got our... Um, we've gone from... So I started off with a, a file that was um, had 100 entries in it. And when we've run this command, we're down to, I think it's seven or eight uh, lines that we've come back with. So we've just targeted the previews. Um, and you can see here we've got uh, images which range well, 60, 66 KB. Um, so how do we target images of a specific size or over a specific size? One of the things that, um, one of the reasons we used awk over said was with awk we can um, use expressions. And this is where we get into the, the programming side of it. So uh, here we say we're going to use the awk command. We're going to use the caret as the field separator. And then the magical thing is $3, which happens to be our um, file size. So in the top example, it's a 66,226. Um, and we say we want to pick up anything that's over 30,000 KB or 30,000 bytes, sorry, um, yeah, kilobytes. Um, so that's 30,000 there. And then we're going to print out um, the result of that. And we're going to... Um, create a file as part of the process, which is our uh, preview images, 80KB or .03. And what do we get? We basically end up with uh, sorry, I didn't put in the image. Um, okay, so we end up with a reduced uh, set of data. So what would we have? We would have oh, this is it. Sorry. Um, this is anything that's over uh, 30 KB. So we've reduced it down to four uh, images to process here. OK, now, because our um, all our images originally saved as an original uh, type of image when they go through, uh, so these are all for product images. 
um, from the CMS. We needed to convert our preview back to original. Um, so how could we do this? Well, again, we could. Um, I probably could have done it in awk, but the way I actually did it um, was using set again. So we just say, uh, let's take the file, which happens to be the preview images 80 KB. Let's um, search for preview underscore and replace it with original underscore. Uh, so we do that and create another output file, which is our original images. Um, and then finally, what we need to pass to the um, rate task that was built was just actually the image and then whatever the Amazon bucket was and the um, URL for it. Um, and the file service would go off and find that and then reprocess the image. So to do that, we uh, use the AUX script again, or um, utility. Again, we because everything's delimited by the carrots, we pass it to minus F and say we're going to use carrot there. And we just want to print out the fourth field. Um, and uh, that's what we ended up with. So uh, I want to talk about a little bit more about some of AUX's um, programming features, probably for the Rubius. I don't know Java, so this might be a Java type thing as well. Um, apologies, I don't know. Um, but for the Rubius, I'm sure you'll have seen something like this, which is something to evaluate, uh, basically the ternary operator. Um, and I think um, Matt's, when he wrote, uh, Ruby drew on a bunch of other languages, and I think some of the Unix utilities, I suspect, may have been some of them, given that this, as soon as I saw this, I went, oh, I wonder if you know it came from Orc. I wonder if that was the inspiration for it. Um, so we can um, run evaluations, uh, make comparisons, we can um, also do stuff at the start, so I haven't, haven't put this in my talk, but um, you can do things like you can do some processing uh, at the start before you iterate over your file. You can then iterate over line by line, and then when you get to the end, which is typically what was done for report generation, and you might want to print out some totals or subtotals, uh, you can do an end block. Um, so that's my uh, presentation. Any questions? Nothing too technical, please. <laughs> Okay. No trolls, I hope. If you have multiple set commands, does it pass the file multiple times or does it do it on on each line before moving on to do each command in the line? Is it the same as this? Oh, I believe it. I, I believe it builds it up internally and then um, just passes it line by line. Don't know. I didn't write it. I've not looked at the internals. I'm sure it's in C or something even more obscure to uh, my programming knowledge. Um, but it's quick. You know, it, it's really quick. So the 15 million images that we had to process here, um, running all of these scripts. Uh, the, the thing that took longest was writing them and, and making sure they were right. Um, actually running it probably took about, I think it was five to 10 minutes on my Mac. And I had, I always had, this is the lightest you will ever see my Mac in terms of things that are open. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm usually hammering, hammering it and using up lots of resources. So, um, you know, it's, it's pretty quick. Certainly quicker than if it had been done in pure Ruby. Okay, yep. Yep. Yeah, so, so basically the you're talking about the Pragmatic Press book, which is um, to do with text processing in Ruby. Um, you know, I think most of the stuff that existed in the Unix world has been ported to the languages we use these days. I mean, I'm, I wouldn't, I know nothing about Go other than the one or two presentations I've been to here. 
but I'm sure you have all the same kind of things uh, and go and can do the same kind of processing. Ruby, um, because it was inspired by uh, a bunch of languages, has a lot of the kind of the, the pearly stuff and the which was which came from the Unix stuff. Um, so yeah, we can certainly do it in Ruby. Um, how you know people say that that Ruby's slow. I you know I only go on what I hear. I don't don't see anything to me that, and I don't get into the performance kind of stuff. But yeah, you can do it in Ruby. But would it be would it you know use the right tool for the job? Sometimes it's easier. Okay. We know Ruby, we work with it every day, so it's probably easier to write it and think about it in, in terms of Ruby. But you've got these tools if you need to use them and you know you might end up having to go onto a server where you don't have Ruby installed and so you know you can reach down to the lower level um, tools. I'm not sure in terms of the ones that are like spun up in the cloud, but certainly, you know, if you had a, a Solaris or an HP box that was, you know, physically sat. So when we used to have the file service here and it was sat on, I don't know, some version of Linux, then it would have been, uh, unless you had specifically said to not install it, I think it came out of the box. It's certainly available on the, the Mac, although I did a couple of things um, in preparing this and I was like, ah. Maybe that's the difference between uh, OS X flavor and um, and BSD. Um, so yeah. So for those that came expecting wonders and real in depth stuff on Orc, if if you're inter if you're seriously interested in in some more on this, I'd be happy to put together some a couple of lunchtime sessions. As I said, we've got uh, Maz's excellent 600 page book that we could take some examples out of. Um, I guess the, the biggest problem for me putting this together was A, I didn't realize how long it was going to take to prepare a presentation. It took me way longer than I expected, given I'd already done part of the work. Uh, the other, what I was going to show you, what I did want to show you was how I went about sanitizing um, the file, because that was quite interesting. It was basically using a whole load of uh, other Unix utilities in conjunction with Set and Orc to rip out, um, you know, I think you've got to be doing pretty well if you if you can be bothered to go and hack into, you know, if you could hack into S3 and, and get to our buckets and that kind of thing. But, um, you know, just to make it so that uh, if anything was confidential, uh, we could open source this. Um, so I'd be happy to talk a bit more about that. Um, yeah.